What's up, citizens of the NBA world? Welcome back uh, to yet another episode. I'm very excited to have with us Sylvia Kayubi from the uh, Duke Fuqua NBA program. She's a current student right now. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to our listeners and yeah. our viewers. Hi, Mateo. Thanks for inviting me. That's great to be here. So I'm Sylvia. I'm from Brazil. Um, I am. I was born in São Paulo and based in São Paulo. Uh, I work in the technology industry and I love it. I love traveling as well, reading books, going to the movies, and I was working for a startup before I, I joined the program. And you've developed so much. In, oh well, so now you're a current student at Duke Fuqua, yes? Yeah. Second year. Yeah, Second and year. I've changed a lot since then. It's been. I've been there for a year and three months okay i'm close to the, to the end that's very exciting yeah um but it's still i have four months to go okay but uh it's been a very interesting journey so so why did you choose to do Fuqua out of all the other schools i mean like I, you work in the tech Fuqua is i mean a lot of people think it's more health related uh, uh, uh it's more of a health related industry why Fuqua? yeah i mean i agree uh, the health uh, sector is very, the health education is very strong at Duke, but they also have other interesting things, for example, beginning with the format, the yeah. design of their program, so they have this global program for working professionals, mm -hmm. so you can apply and, and be in the program while you're still working, so you don't have to give up your home or be away of your family, of your job, Okay. so that's, that's something that really got my attention that's yeah. one that's one of the main reasons I chose to because of this format uh -huh. but they also have all the things that make them unique so for example the the they have this strong teaching on the leadership okay side so for example the Dean wants the students really to be leaders of consequence meaning that okay I want you to be successful in your yeah. business but are you concerned about giving back to the community? Yeah. You know, are you good? So it's not just about being successful, but giving back and nurturing your society, your community back. So I think that's make, that makes Duke very unique. And also the diversity. So this global program allows you to go to five different places around the globe. Okay. And you get to visit China, India, um, Chile in Latin America and Europe so you have all this diverse and cultural background yeah. and I think that's very enriching for which, your which countries career. have you gone yet I mean, so far uh, well to the US which is the right, right, right. base well, which is the but then after that Santiago okay. in Chile uh -huh. um, Shanghai in China New Delhi in India and then Berlin in Europe. That nice. was phenomenal, really. Berlin. Yeah. Oh yeah, I really want to visit Berlin. That's one of my places, like one of my next, it's in my top three lists of places that I need to visit. Canada, Berlin, and New Zealand. Uh, it's from oh yeah. 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 From, yeah, from these three ones, I've been to Berlin. I had, the, I had, I've been there before the program, but the experience in the residency was a totally different one. Mm, yeah. Why? Why was it? What? What made it so different? Because you have the other students, the peers, and you have uh, all this energy, this diverse group. I think the Duke is very focused on diversity. Yeah. And going to residencies and being able to meet local uh, entrepreneurs or local professionals that can tell you their stories and how they 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 see the world and their vision is very interesting. But the connection you make with the other peers uh, is different in each place you go. So that's very interesting as well. Uh. The environment really changes you, have an impact on that. And we learn that in school, like in class. But you can actually experience that too in okay. residences. Okay, you yeah. actually feel it like, like when you do it, you're, you're, there, you're in it and you're doing yeah. it. Yeah, huh. because they have a, a different culture, a different story, a different history. Yeah. So actually, the the, the way you explore the city is different. Uh -huh. What you learn is different. So okay. you can have one different takeaway from every different places you go right. for residences. Okay. Yeah, oh, nice. that's very good. Yeah, that sounds, that's very interesting. That sounds like fun. Um, 
are you registering? Are you documenting any of it? Like, you know, like your trips? You're, I mean, I'm sure you're taking pictures. Or, or, oh, do, you, yeah, or do you I, not have like time for that? Like, there's just no time for I mean, Instagram yeah, stories. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's we have a very tight like schedule. It's very tight, yeah. but we do have a lot of activities that are organized and prepared yeah. uh, by Duke. So you can explore the cities and uh, get to know, like, get to visit companies and get to know people, like, in the, the within the schedule. But you can also take some time off to explore the city yourself. So you can do a little bit of both, but you do things more. You do things more of what Duke offers you because it's a very tight schedule. But you can explore the city. That's okay. for sure. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Well, okay, I want to kind of rewind. Let's go back to like the time when you were applying for an MBA and you were in the process. What was like the hardest part for you throughout the entire year? Like, how long did it take you to apply? Uh, I think from when I decided to apply until I applied and passed, it took me one and a half year. A year and a half? Yeah. Wow, okay. What was the hardest part there? So I think you can often have that feeling that you are or alone or you feel like uh, you know you feel like there's no one supporting you or you are on this alone but you're not but during the since it's a long time and it takes a while for you to see some progress I think that's that's the hardest part yeah but uh, I think talking to other prospect prospective students or talking to your family or talking to other like to your boss or, or people around you that can support you uh, in this journey I think that's very important I think yeah yeah that's definitely important how did you get through it so you you, you really because I mean okay so during the application process when you're actually learning you're you're taking the you're taking certain courses to pass the proficiency test right the TOEFL and the GMAT you basically have to cut off your social life Oh yeah, you know, I mean, you, you can't, you can't, you can't balance your professional life. You're, you're still working while you're applying, but also you have to study. So, friends and family kind of get it put in the back seat. How did you try to maintain that connection? Like, did you have like a specific? Today I have to call my friend. You know, like, were there certain rules? Yeah, I think yeah, definitely you have to set some rules, and I think. It's very important that you set your priorities for that year or for that moment of your life. It's just a phase. I mean, your friends will be there. Yeah. You know, even after one year, two years, they will be there. And family, it's more delicate because you need to give them more attention. Yeah, because they expect you. They expect you to, but I think talking might be key here. So if you can get them on board with you and make them, make sure they understand yeah. your desires your ambitions and this is important to you they will support you but you have to have the conversations whenever needed and make sure you have a personal schedule to go over whatever is needed mm -hmm. to the admissions process and then if you do have time you can call a friend etc but that's the priority for that moment so I think it's important for you to understand that you might have to not call a friend because you have something about the program to do that's important yeah. but they're your friends so they will be there after you're done with it so the gmail wasn't hard for you though oh yeah it's hard it takes a lot of preparation <laughs> but yeah i mean like i said it's just it's a matter of uh, priority so yeah you, <laughs> you have to be, be be very like clear on what you want and really defines you as a person you know so if you're really determined to do what you want to do it, it may take some time but you get to that and you'll be happier and more willing to give it back to your friends and family and that's true and community yeah that's true that's also true what, what was the most what part of the process were you most nervous nervous about them most nervous about I think the I didn't know how the university would see me I think maybe because it's very what you know and how you see the world and, and this kind of your you are very aware of that wow, okay. but you don't know how the university is gonna see you if it's gonna judge yeah it's a process right. it's not really a judgment but they will have to do that at some point say hey this 
this uh, potential student here is a good fit or this one is not a very good fit. They're yeah. going to have to judge you somehow. So I think I was uh, mostly concerned about how they would see me and if they would see me as a good fit. Right. Because you, you know stuff, you know your experience. But knowing things and being able to show this, it's, they're, it's different. Yeah. So you have to balance that very well and know you're well enough to be able to express yourself in the right way. Yeah, I actually agree with that. I mean, you really have to be authentic. Instead of trying to play, instead of trying to play like the guessing game of what is it that they want to see in a candidate and let me try to tell my story that kind of fits what they want. I think it's totally more about just being true to yourself. It's, yeah. And you got to just kind of like, all right, hope for the best. Right? Yeah, yeah. And you have to be you because you cannot support being someone different for a long time and you have to be very authentic mm -hmm. and I think whenever you do the application you write all all of the you know you answer all the questions you have to and it and you have your recommendation letters so they can see how your peers and bosses see you yeah um, they are gonna see they're gonna notice very quickly if you're being real and authentic in your own like assumptions about yourself or your experience or telling your experience yeah they're gonna know if you're being authentic and reliable yeah. or not yeah, yeah. I, think, well, yeah. I think that yeah it, they've been doing it for long enough exactly they have know? a lot of experience for <laughs> sure yeah. yeah so i think it it's very transparent when you talk to someone and you can really you kind of can tell if the person is being honest yeah. or transparent it's yeah. sometimes we don't realize it when it's with us but you can realize when it's with another person we are True. talking to True. so i think it applies for all of us mm. so <laughs> yeah you know when you got that acceptance call how did they accept you did you get a call did you get an email what happened i got an email uh, with a formal letter attached and it was nice because they they gave me a scholarship saying oh you're you're approved uh, it would be great to have you on board and here's you know a, did a you scholarship for, a scholarship? for you did you actually did, were you asking no, for it no, no, they no that the was a, uh, so that they was really a nice surprise you. That was a really, nice surprise. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah when the school offers you a scholarship, it's like, yeah, we want yeah, you Yeah, I mean, I found about that specific piece later, so I was very glad I, I, I wasn't in without really expecting anything because it's a huge investment. So being recognized in the, be in the very beginning, it's also That's nice. very nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How did you feel that day when you read the email? Oh, my God, what, yeah. What did you I was, do? <laughs> what, what came through? I was sort of, you know, finishing a meeting, and I said, oh, you know, let's check my personal email to see if I get some news from uh, Duke. And then was there the email, I think, like, three days later after I was interviewed. Yeah. They sent me the email, maybe a week after that. And I don't know, I was just, I was really excited. I was really excited, I yeah, bet. because, yeah. Is I wanted to pass, but you never know, right? So you get a little anxious. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, oh my God, guys, I passed, you know? So I just kind of sort of told everyone on the table that I had yeah. passed, yeah. And it's just real, it's just a big relief, right? You know, when you're yeah. finally accepted, it's just like, ooh, a whole year and a half of hard work paid off. Oh yeah, know? definitely. Nice. It's what incredible. about when you got on campus? What was that feeling like? How did it feel like for you when you fir in your first day of class? What was it, you know? I mean, they had like orientation week and stuff too, right? Yeah, you know, at least in this program, since it's global, so in the first residency, everyone is gonna, you know, meet each other for the first time. Because we live in our places like normally, daily lives, but then when you do have the residency, that's when you meet people like in person. So the for very first time we had the orientation in the very first morning, that's when you start interacting with people. I don't know, it's very exciting and I got anxious at the same time because I didn't know what I was going to find. And I felt kind of, oh my God, these people are so younger than me. And I, you know, I, I even felt like, oh my God, I'm too old for this. Ooh. Yeah, in the beginning, because I met some people that were younger than me. Uh -huh. Then I met people that were, you know, kind of my age or even older. But in the very beginning, I had met just just this little amount of people. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm too old for this. But then, so I got more. <laughs> 
it more just, it anxious. Just turned, yeah. It just turned into a snowball. But then, yeah, after you start connecting to people and seeing their background and their stories and their desires, I think you, you feel more connected and your anxiety goes down and you feel more part of this community, this class, you huh. know, so it, it takes a little time. Yeah. But yeah, I think you, you feel more adapted and comfortable like over time. Are you, are you part of any clubs? Yeah, the Women in Business Women Club, in business yeah. Club. Tell me Very about that, like, what do you guys do? Do you guys sit around and just talk about business? Or? Yeah, the whole idea is to provide like awareness okay. and, to bring, and, and, and to bring inclusiveness in the workplace and, and especially bring men into that discussion. So we are responsible, I'm the co-founder of the Women in Business Club, so we are responsible for organizing one event for each of the residences. Okay. We have six residences, so we have to find something relevant to the place we're going True. and something relevant to this matter. So for example, when we went to Santiago in Chile, we found a Chilean business woman very successful she worked in the mining sector so very male wow. that's very male area yeah and then she was very successful and she's you know she was a she was a woman so we we could uh, get her in contact get her contact and you know and bring her invite her to go to the hotel we were uh, and she shared with a with her, with us, her story and her struggles and how she managed to do that. It was very interesting because she she shared how the men around her life helped her doing that. So, for example, her starting with her dad, and then her husband, and then her boss. Okay. So these three men, she said, you know, I, I don't think I could have gone this far without this male support, the support you know yeah. so that was very interesting and she really talked about the the support from the from from the young men yeah so because they are more open-minded they yeah. might yeah. you know we really need to listen and to include and this is very interesting it's kind of funny though i always say to people like old white men no, 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 i want to say white men but the, the, the powerful men of the world, the old powerful men of the world are the biggest yeah. problem to progress, I think. I don't know. Yeah, because yeah, things are changing and we do want to have like equal equal pay, equal conditions and I think we are getting there. I think we have evolved a lot as a community, as a society, as a, you know, as, you know. As a global community. As a global I mean, community. Yeah. But something interesting that this lady said was that someone raised, uh, uh, it was a guy, he raised his hand and he said, you know, so, okay, I understand what you're saying, but what, what um, does a woman can, what can a woman do that a man can't? Give birth. And that, but, <laughs> she, yeah, 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 yeah. And yes. her answer was like, you know, in the work environment, yeah. nothing. You know, yeah. everything he can do, she can do too. And there's nothing she can do that the man cannot. Right. It's just whenever you have diversity, people feel more included, more, and they are more productive, and they are more happy. I mean, happier. So people are happier. Basically, that's it. So, if you if you feel accepted for who you are, yep. regardless of gender, age, and whatever yeah, it, it is, it makes a total difference. Huge yeah. Difference. What about you? You're in the tech. In you were working in the tech industry. That's a totally. That's a very male dominant uh, industry as well. People think you know. Oh, oh, now it's technology with globalization and with the advances technology, more and more women are there. But still. Like, I have direct contact with a lot of people from, like, you know, Google, Facebook, Amazon, and you look, it's still not what we expect it to be, what we think it is. It's still very male. I mean, just the startup culture, the, the Silicon Valley, it's all guys talking yeah. about talking about startups, you know? And, yeah. You know, it's all bros, right? You know? I know, but it, I also think that it depends on the, on the, the, set, on the internal area. So, for example, if it's... IT like developers, for example. My uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you can keep going. 
I don't know. If it's like, uh, you know, if you're a developer, it's you're prob probably going to find more men yeah. working in these positions True. than women. It's just because women might like other things, which is okay. But I think that overall in the company, if you can have more females or more different people, not just females, um, to nurture this diversity. Do you, think, do, you, do you think your Women in Business Club has helped you like figure out different ways for you to like help other women, emerging women professionals, like really break through, break through in the tech, yeah, in the tech I think, field? I think it's a process, and I think it's not tech. Tech field is one field, but I think there are other field, fields. Yeah. Even in Brazil, in the U.S., there's a lot still to to be achieved. Yeah. Uh, but I think the exchanging of ideas and experiences, I think it's very enriching. That's when you're gonna get more comfortable of being uncomfortable and really like fighting for what you believe and what is right. And really like, uh, but I think it's very important to bring Mayo to this discussion. So what we do is exchange ideas and experiences to give strength to women and to make men more aware of what it's like to be a woman in the workplace because it's still there, there's a lot of um, I think uh, okay so here's my theory looking on down this. and yeah because I think look what I've noticed with the women with the female community and I know a lot of women who are in business and obviously with my work um, what I've noticed is a lot of the like the talk the chatter about it's, 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 I think it's wrong, the idea that women should want to be like equal to men. Okay. Wait, what I'm going to say, I know everyone's going to be what? <laughs> Every woman's like, what? You want to get hit right now? The thing is, much more something. What, I, what I'm trying to say is, I think it should be the other way around. I think men should be placed as equal to women in the sense that if the men in professional companies begin to receive less salary than a woman does, mm -hmm. that's when they'll start feeling it. Like, okay, yeah. I feel, now I, think, I feel. You see that? Yeah. You see what I'm doing? I'm flipping it. Because it's not like trying to get women to the level of men. Because sub subliminally, yeah. what it I makes guess. it sound like is that women are inferior. And that's the biggest problem. A lot of, I know a couple of women who are in like very, very feminist, you know, militant feminist groups. And I tell them, I'm like, you guys are looking at it wrong. Because making you guys, you know, your speech being, we want, you know, equal rights with men sounds like you're, a, you're under it. Rather than yeah. men should be equal with women, then we're going to see, all right, let's cut men's pay. Let's pay, let, if we can bring in a culture of companies where companies start paying men 30% less than women, yeah. one, it's good for the overhead of any company because they're, make, they're spending less money. Two, all the men in the company are going to be like, what, this is not fair, but then they're going to start, they're going to start feeling what it really is to have to work as hard as a girl or, or uh, as hard or harder than a woman, but still make 30% less pay. Mm -hmm. I think that's where we're going to start seeing change happening. The guy's are going to be like, all right, this is not fair. Yeah. Gonna do it. That's exactly. what, this you know, is not fair, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, the biggest way to impact anyone for me is hurting their pockets. If you mess with a man's pocket, his wallet, he's gonna make something happen. That always that goes into like politics, that goes into business, that goes yeah. even into personal life, you know? A guy won't mind spending money on his car, but if you say, you know, if you take away 30% of that money that he's allowed to spend on his car, for example, well, I'll make the money at home. No, let's flip it. Let's see if the woman's making the money at home and calling the shots, how he feels about that. Even if it's for a social experiment, you'll see changes, immediate changes. I don't know. I mean, that's. I think that's a great idea. I think we should all apply. That. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, as a human nature, I think that whenever you get to experience that for real, that's when you actually see the other side. It can be very challenging to actually be in someone else's shoes. But I think that would be a great experience. So I look, agree. Yeah, that, yeah. I'm, I'm all for that movement. You know. Uh, it's not, it shouldn't be like, oh, we want equal rights to men. No, 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 no. no let's, make, let's make men equal to the women professionally. Because obviously physically and, you know, whatever, that you can't do that. But professionally speaking, if we take the same, if we start taking, even at the entry level, all right, you're going to be an intern, but you're going to make 30% less because you're a guy. Okay? 
you accept it. You're gonna see it, the whole world's gonna be like, no, I don't accept this, this is wrong. So, okay, why is it wrong for you and not wrong for women who are going through the same thing? Yeah. You know? What if yeah. you're, what if, you know, what if you're even better qualified for this position than the girl who's, you know, than the woman, the female who's gonna take this job and get 30% more than you? <coughs> yeah. How do you feel about that? I don't agree. Okay. Yeah. There you go. And that's perfect. Because women have, like, they have to prove themselves so hard to be equal to men sometimes. And sometimes they are even more qualified and even more, you know, hard worker and right. even more stuff. And right. I do believe that men can do things like as good or better as the same way that as women can do things, some things even better or you know the same you know on, like on the same yeah. level. But yeah, yeah that would be a great. That's experience. totally on my quest for pure meritocracy. You know, you have to you have to balance out the equation first because right now it's all about like oh we want to be equal to men when it should be all right men want to be equal to women and then we balance it out where all right how about we. The person who's best qualified for a job get paid get paid, yeah. get paid better, not just who's been in you know whether it's sex or race or whether it's you know tenure. I don't yeah. Know. I don't know. Anyway. But yeah. Just... Some places around the world, I've heard that they whenever you apply for a job position, you send out your resume and you don't say your name or your age. Or your so sex. they really. Yeah, your your gender, gender, your your name, and your age. So they really see you for who you are. For it your doesn't qualifications. Matter. Yeah. Oh, that's so, brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant. Because I mean, you know, nowadays you have a lot of the LGBT community. I don't know how many letters there are now, but you also have people who identify as different genders, and that's going to be another big, big problem in professions when you go like, all right, I don't identify as male or female. What do I put in my resume? But if you have companies who are like, we don't want to know your name, we don't want to know your age or your gender, we yeah. want to see your qualifications. Yeah, then they're being be, fair and more and that smarter. Because we're awesome. not gonna get the best people without judgment, you know. So yeah, yeah. And a lot of companies, the biggest problem also too, a lot of companies they talk big game, like yeah, we want equality too, but they don't. Their yeah. actions do not map to what they're saying. Saying and doing are two it's completely two different, different things. things. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. they are. I truly believe. Yeah, that. but I think I mean at the same time, all this uh, gets you know stronger and bigger initiatives. They, you know, at least they're trying to do something, you know, and they are somehow generating some sort of awareness. That it takes some time, but it, it I, I've seen some change, changes already. So it, you know, I've, I've I've seen, for example, women as CEOs and stuff like that. So I think we are evolving, you know, as a world, as a global thing. Like but I said, the old the old powerful men who are in control of sixty percent, seventy percent of the world's wealth, when they die, <laughs> that's when we start seeing change. Not that I'm against them. It's just come on. Yeah. You know, what happened when they were young, aspiring professionals? We didn't have like the internet. Yeah. They didn't have the internet. They grew up in a very different professional culture than we are facing today. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Things has changed, right? So companies need to follow that change, you know, to be actually included. Otherwise, they will just be held back. Right. So, final couple of questions here. Like, what would you say? What would your like advice be to students who are planning to apply, who are in their beginning, they're starting their MBA journeys or in the middle of it? What would you say to them? What I would say, yeah. I would say definitely just to stick with it. If you really believe uh, in yourself, and if if there's something that you really want to do, uh, don't be a like an easy giver up, you know? So yeah, just don't give up. I mean, I think the great, I think, I think that the things or the process that we struggle or that we suffer the most are the ones that are gonna give us the greatest results and the greatest like, like, you know, being the right? greatest satisfaction, yes. thanks. Yes. Uh, so everything that, you know, it sounds, 
like cliche, but it's true. Like everything that comes very easily can go very easily too. So, uh, so if you really want to pursue like an MBA, and I mean, just do it. It's very worth it. I can talk, you know, my own. That's my own experience. But just don't don't give up your dreams. Yeah, it sounds silly, but just you know, hang in there and talk to people, you know, and and look for alumni or current students, people that you can, you know, lean on as a support uh, and can reach out to help you, you know, uh, level down your anxiety. And loneliness. And loneliness. (laughs) Uh, And I think, yeah, and because whenever you reach out to people, you feel that you're not alone. And I think that helps you to keep going. Totally yeah. Well, Sylvia, I want to thank you so much for you know giving us a little bit of your time and your busy schedule and yeah. talking about Duke and women in business. That was kind of that was something I really wanted to talk about. I remember I asked you about that during the Duke Pupil event that we did at the hamburger place. Uh-huh. I asked you about that, and you were like, "Yeah, I mean, women in business." Yeah. I, was like, I need to meet you because cool. that was a topic I wanted to bring up. I wanted to talk about it. It's something that that's think, very important. Yeah, because I mean, important. what I've noticed is at least even in, my, in, the, in the people who are following the NBA wire more and more women are subscribing so I'm like this is cool we're getting more and more women interested in business I need to I need to talk about women in business and, and we need to get this out there we need to try to figure out ways where we can kind of find the middle ground you know mm-hmm. which is kind of what happens in any type of relationship between a man and a woman or even between a company and, and the employees Finding always ways to bridge a gap that will benefit everybody as a whole. Exactly, and it will. If you know, if you you know are open to the opportunity. Yeah. Sylvia, thanks so much. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. That was great. When you come back I... from uh, the NBA and uh, uh, you know when you're in alumni, I'd love to interview you again. That would be great. Thank you. Like, you know, maybe maybe give an update on what happened in the, in the next. Yeah. Yeah. The next of, uh, phase yeah. of my life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Having a new purpose, right? New purpose. Yeah. New job. Post yeah. MBA, what's yeah. changed? What hasn't? We would love that. Okay. That yeah. would be great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Fantastic.